From the day of her first communion at the age of 11, the crucifix and Our Lady of Sorrows inspired the saintly soul of Saint Clelia Barbieri. She was far more mature than her age. She worked with joy and love, praying and thinking of God at all times, and even speaking of Him to her companions. Clelia lived in charity, and fervent faith burned inside her, and she felt that she must go to give herself to all of God's poor. Let us learn the amazing story of this saint today. Clelia Barbieri was born to Giacinta Nanetti and Giuseppe Barbieri on February 13, 1847. Her parents, Joseph Barbieri and Giacinta Nanetti, were a pious couple who lived a very modest life. Their family was built on the rock of faith and a Christian life. In line with her mother's wish, she was baptized Clelia Rochelle Maria on the very day of her birth. Clelia grew up in a village called Budri of South Giovanni in Persiceto on the outskirts of Bologna, Italy. Her mother taught Clelia how to love God early in her life, placing in her heart the desire for sanctity. One day, Clelia asked her, Mother, how can I become a saint? As Giacinta nurtured her daughter's faith, she also helped Clelia learn the art of sewing, spinning, and weaving, which was the most important work of the district. In 1855, during a cholera epidemic, eight-year-old Clelia lost her father. Through the generosity of her uncle, she, her mother, and younger sister, Ernestina, moved into a more comfortable house near the parish church. For Clelia, the days became more saintly and dedicated. Anyone who wanted to see her could always find her either at home weaving or sewing or in church praying. Although it was usual at that time to receive First Communion almost at adulthood, Clelia due to her unusual catechistic preparation and spirituality, made hers on June 17, 1858, at only 11 years of age. This was a decisive day for Clelia's future, since it was then that she had her first mystic experience. She underwent anguish and suffering for the sins that crucified Christ and so sorrowed Our Lady. From the day of her first communion, the crucifix and Our Lady of Sorrows inspired her saintly soul. She was further renewed and strengthened in her faith that day. Far more mature than her years, she was the companion and model for other working girls. Clelia brought something particularly personal to her little world. She worked with joy and love, praying and thinking of God at all times, and even speaking of Him to her companions. Her remarkable piety and humble dedication brought her to the attention of her parish priest, Father Gaetano Guidi, who began to see great potential in her. He urged her and her close friend, Teodora Baraldi, to undertake the education of the young girls of the parish, whose families were too poor to have them otherwise educated. Clelia agreed and joined a group called the Christian Catechism Workers, whose aim was to combat religious negligence. At first, Clelia was admitted as an assistant teacher and was the least important member. But soon, her talents and humility compelled the group to elect her as their leader. Clelia was a beautiful girl, and with more exposure to the public eye, 
she soon received a barrage of marriage proposals, all of which she graciously rejected. She instead served as the leader of a growing number of young women who devoted themselves to apostolate. She soon started nurturing the idea of forming a small religious community dedicated both to prayer and serving the poor and abandoned social classes. But Italy was going through a turbulent time, and Clelia couldn't start the new congregation during that time. After a few years, in 1868, she eventually founded a group called the Little Sisters of the Mother of Sorrows. She is the youngest founder of a religious community in the history of the Catholic Church. She was only 21 when she founded the congregation. Clelia and her young friends moved into the so-called teacher's house. The group began to minister to the poor and sick in the community, teaching the faith to the children of the town. At first, the primary concern of the members was to care for the girls deserted or neglected by their parents and train them in good living and domestic work. A little later, during a retreat, Clelia wrote a rule of common life which stressed prayer, sacrifice, work, and love. After moving in to the teacher's house, a series of extraordinary events occurred, which were undoubtedly the work of divine power. Clelia began to experience physical and moral suffering. She was also subject to harsh criticisms and even humiliated by others. It was sad that the people weren't more understanding. However, her faith and devotion in prayer were always extraordinary. The small group, Little Sisters of the Mother of Sorrows, grew in numbers as more and more people recognized the noble work done by them. Slowly, the people began to see Clelia as a leader and teacher of the faith. They started calling her mother, although she was only 22 years old. She was often credited with the ability to read hearts. Meanwhile, while Clelia progressed rapidly through the stages of sanctity, the first stages of tuberculosis appeared in her fragile body. For seven months, she was confined to bed. Miraculously, though, she recovered. But the disease suddenly flared up only two years after she had founded the order. Clelia died, prophesying to the sister at her bedside, I'm leaving, but I'll never abandon you. You will grow in number, and you will expand over plains and mountains to work in the vineyard of the Lord. The day will come when here at Boudry, many will arrive with carriages and horses. And she added, Be of good cheer. I'm going to paradise, but I'll always be with you and never desert you. She died on July 13th, 1870, with the happiness of one going to meet her spouse and beloved Lord. Clelia's death prophecy has been fulfilled. The religious order established by St. Clelia has expanded and continues to grow. It extends throughout Italy, in India, and in Tanzania. Today, the sisters following in Clelia's footsteps humbly continue their useful work of assistance to all in need. And now, number 300, spread over 35 community houses. Being only 23 at the time of her death, Clelia Barbieri is the youngest founder of a religious community in the history of the church.
Barbieri's death soon resulted in an unusual and unexplained occurrence that has often been reported in the various parishes that she visited and in the houses in which her order is located. Her voice is often heard during scripture readings and songs, and this voice never speaks alone, but is heard as part of a group. People from various backgrounds have reported hearing the voice, which is described to be unlike any they have ever heard. Father, in Clelia Barbieri, you gave the Christian community an example of gospel life, celebrated in the service of others. Grant that, like her, we may do the work of the Lord as servants of His kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Christian Kids TV would like to thank you, our supporters, for making it possible to produce four new videos in the month of February. We would also love to take a moment to celebrate the 27 new supporters on Patreon who have joined our family. We now have a total of 288 patrons supporting our mission. We are now more than halfway to our 500 patrons goal. This is such exciting news. Like we said before, once we reach our goal of 500 Patreon supporters, we will be releasing the full-length film, Our Lady of Lord. If you would like to become a patron, or would like more information about becoming a patron, please visit patreon.com slash christiankids. There are different giving tiers to choose from making it easy for anyone to join, starting from as low as $2. Thank you again to all our wonderful supporters. We couldn't do this without you.